A judge in Massachusetts convicted Michelle Carter involuntary manslaughter back in 2017, saying she had a responsibility to call the police or call her boyfriend's family rather than knowing he was going to kill himself and doing nothing, and sentenced her to 15 months in prison. But Carter's attorneys are appealing to the highest court in the land, arguing the charges violated her right to free speech, as well as due process, claiming involuntary manslaughter is too vague of a charge to apply in a case involving suicide. Back in 2014, she was 17 years old when she told 18-year-old Conrad Roy to get back into his pickup truck as it filled with carbon monoxide. That was after Roy told her that he was having second thoughts and was too scared to go through with his suicide. So what now? Alex Little is here, criminal defense attorney, former federal prosecutor, live with us from Nashville. Good afternoon. It's an appeal to the Supremes. And, and what is her justification and how might they react? So the Supreme Court takes about one out of a thousand cases like this. It's a very, very long shot. But her argument, she has two of them. One is that this sort of speech, it's pure speech, she wasn't there, she didn't take any action, is protected by the First Amendment. And that if Massachusetts wants to create that into a crime, it's prohibited by the federal Constitution. Her second argument is there's no way that Ms. Carter or anyone in her position would have known at the time she committed this conduct that it was a criminal offense. And therefore, the crime was vague and it violated the Constitution in that fashion. The other side says, you were on your phone with the, your boyfriend who had decided to kill himself but then was chickening out. And you convinced him his original course was the right one. Get back in your truck. Go ahead and kill yourself. And legally speaking, that should be allowed. Yeah, and that's what the judge said when he found her guilty of manslaughter. It was certainly a unique prosecution. It had never been done before. Her judges, her attorneys point that out. This is an unprecedented case. But there's no doubt her conduct is incredibly morally reprehensible. And the argument her attorneys are trying to make is that when it comes to speech, we allow all sorts of reprehensible speech and don't make it a crime. So if I were standing on a curb and urging someone, jump in front of that car, jump in front of that car, as long as I didn't push that person, I didn't do anything illegal. That's the argument she's trying to make now. And, and you don't seem to think that the Supreme Court might take this up, or do you? You know, the U.S. Supreme Court doesn't take cases like this up unless there's going to be some national implications. As I said, this is an unprecedented case. It hasn't been brought before. So her attorneys have a real, real high bar to cross to convince the Supreme Court that of the 70 or 80 cases it takes every year, it should focus its attention on this one. Alex Little, great to see you again. Thank you. Thank you. A toddler is dead. After that toddler fell.